Hey, let's imagine we are working on a new game in Far Cry series. Far Cry whatever, it doesn't matter. Here's our brief. It's a first-person shooter, open world, with the typical Ubisoft gameplay loop. Repetitive quests, cleaning outposts, and so on. We are sitting around the kitchen table and brainstorming how to make awesome game. One that won't get boring over 60 hours playthrough. And we get an idea. What if we make enemies that create unique and interesting gameplay situations? So that instead of mindless dummies that just walk back and forth and occasionally shoot in the player's direction, there is some real pushback. Plus, since this is Far Cry, we can add different factions, each with its own combat style. So the player would actually have to adapt to these differences. Sounds like a great idea on paper, but uh, can it actually be done? Well, let's get into it and see what tools we can use to bring this vision to life and how to make the smartest enemies in video games. Let's start with the fundamentals, the kind of basic behavior you'd see in classic games. An enemy calmly walks a patrol route, but if it spots the player, it raises the alarm and engages in combat. Technically, this logic is described using a finite state machine. Imagine the enemy have a switch in its head with several modes, like patrol, alarm, combat. It can be in two modes at the same time. Each mod has its own set of actions. For example, in patrol an NPC walks from one point to another, while in combat it shoots. The transition from one mod to another happens when a certain condition is met. If it sees the player, it switches from patrol to alert. When you have a lot of states, it's better to group them by the main action. For instance, within the larger combat state, you could have substates like shooting from cover, reloading, and throwing grenade. This approach is called hierarchical finite state machine. It's a convenient system that lets you easily add new behaviors. This is exactly how enemy behavior was defined in older games like Half-Life. And even today, it's often the foundation of uh, AI in games. We've designed the foundation of our AI, but it's useless if NPCs have no senses. Let's teach it to see, hear, and remember the player's last known position. Technically, we just attach two sensors to the enemy. For vision, we use a cone or array in front of its eyes to perform a line of sign check. In other words, it checks if the player is inside this cone and if there is a wall between them and the enemy. For hearing, we use similar setup. When a player makes noise, they spawn an invisible sphere collider. If an enemy comes into contact with it, a trigger fires and the enemy state changes. This is a good moment to talk about logic of state changes. Because a behavior like hear a noise immediately raise the alarm feels very clunky from a gameplay experience standpoint. So we need to move beyond the NPC's binary thinking and introduce what's called fuzzy logic. This allows character to be in states like I think I heard something or I almost sure I saw something. To do this, we will take different factors into account. The distance from the sound source, the lighting in the room, the amount of time the player was in the line of sight. These factors influence how quickly the suspicion meters fills up. In turn, the suspicion meter itself is a factor that affects the transition from one state to another. This means the player has to consider multiple variables, which creates tension and encourage gameplay variety. And for us, uh, as the developers, it gives us whole toolbox for building a wide range of gameplay situations. So, we've given our enemy a primitive brain and senses. Now let's teach it to move through the world with purpose and to position itself to be more effective in combat. This is a complex goal, so we need to break it down to three parts, from simple to advanced. First, we need to teach our NPC to simply walk around without bumping into everything. For this, we will need a combination of two systems. A global navigator using an AVMESH and a star algorithm, and a local driver based on reciprocal velocity obstacles. The first system plots the optimal route from point A to point B on a pre-built map of walkable areas while the second helps with real-time steering to smoothly avoid obstacles and other NPCs. Second, we need to instill a self-preservation instinct in our enemy. Here we will use systems that analyze the environment for safety and danger. To do this, we either pre-mark all potential cover points in the level, like uh, crates, walls, uh, columns, or have the AI define them dynamically, giving them a score based on a range of parameters like height, durability, potential firing 
areas, etc. The system generates a rank list with available cover points. Next we need a second system that builds a real-time threat map based on where the player is and where they are shooting or could shoot. These two systems work together to give our NPC the best available position to take. After that it plots a route to that position and occupies it. And the last thing we need is ability to find attack positions. This is where we will use an environment query system. It will help the NPC to choose position that offer a tactical advantage, like flanking the player, taking the high ground, having a clear line of sight, that kind of stuff. Essentially, it works like Google for the environment. It makes a query to the system, like show me all cover points that are flanking the player within a 30 meters radius and have a clear line of sight to their last known position. The system finds candidate points, tests them against these filters and provide the best spot for an attack. Then our NPC runs to it if it's uh, in aggressive state rather than a defensive one. By connecting all of this into one brain, we get an enemy that's pretty good at picking cover and attack positions, and then getting to them without bumping into anyone. Alright, let's talk about behavior. Our ultimate goal is to design an AI that creates interesting and diverse gameplay situations. To do this, we need to teach our enemies not only to evaluate cover, but also to evaluate their own actions, build sequence of those actions and make contextual decisions based on that information. The first thing we need to do is to create a blueprint of everything our NPC is capable of and the conditions for performing those actions. This is called behavior tree. Next, we layer utility AI on top of these actions. This is a scoring system that allows the AI to choose the best possible action from a list of options based on the current situation. For each action it creates a list of consideration or factors. For example, does the NPC have a grenade right now, how far away is cover, is there a clear line of fire to the player, and so on. The system runs through these factors and gives each action a utility score. Then, since we already have a blueprint of all possible actions, we can use it to build sequence from those actions. This is how our enemy learns to plan. There are two main approaches here. Goal -oriented Action planning is the less predictable one from the player's perspective. This is when our NPC sets a high level goal like uh, illuminate the player and then plots a course of actions to reach that goal. You can see this approach in game fear. The second approach is hierarchical task network. Uh, this is when an NPC receives a high level task like uh, clear the room and for each task it has a predefined uh, instructions that lead to its completion. If we implement both approaches we will not only get enemies that make interesting decisions decisions leading to more engaging gameplay, but also a powerful toolbox to make the enemies themselves incredibly diverse. For example, because Go produce more chaotic results, we can apply it to the behavior of uh, undisciplined bandits or mercenaries, and uh, we can use the HTN approach to more professional militarized squads. But that's not all. If we add mathematical weights to the utility scores, uh, we can define the specific behavioral traits. For instance, if we give a multiplier to defensive actions for an uh, HTN squad, we will get a military unit that prefers to fight from cover. Conversely, for a go-op squad, we could increase the weights for aggressive actions and get bandits who are completely reckless. All they care about is dealing maximum damage to the player. Plus, uh, each NPC can have um, individual weights that define them as uh, covered, berserkers, rationalists and so on. After implementing everything we've discussed so far, each enemy in our imaginary Far Cry would already be smart enough to make the gameplay interesting. However, right now they are acting on their own, which doesn't make sense. We want them to be a part of factions, and uh, that means they need to work together as a coordinated unit. The first thing we can do to fix this is to create a shared memory system using a blackboard to coordinate squad members. This is essentially a shared space where NPC can post data, who went where, who does what, the player's last known position, and so on. This information is then used by the systems we've already built, like co -op when AI is planning its next actions. Uh, I suspect something like that was used by Naughty Dog in games like uh, Uncharted 4 and Last of Us uh, Part 2. As the developers, we can also use this to tune the game logic. For example, we can limit the number of simultaneous attackers to prevent 10-man assault from being the single best tactic. 
Next, we can design a role assignment system so that we have flankers, support units, biters, and so on. This again helps to avoid situations where every enemy just sits in the cover. Such a system can be based on the Hungarian algorithm to redistribute tasks and objectives based on each unit's capabilities and priorities. This allows us to create a meaningful tactical schemes in our combat arenas and to spread enemies out across the level to prevent them from bunching up. Alright, let's take a step back and uh, review everything we've designed. We've ended up with a technically proficient enemy with a distinct personality. One that can build effective plans and on top of that is a member of coordinated squad, where everyone has a role and a simple shared goal. Illuminate the player. As you can imagine, winning a fight against such an opponent would be quite difficult. That's why we need tools to help us uh, adjust and control the game flow. We need to make sure that every encounter doesn't completely drain the player and lead to a rage quit. To do this, we first limit the gameplay space to what the player can see. This means that all or at least most of the tactical actions on the battlefield should happen within the player's camera view. This helps to prevent a large number of frustrating deaths from nowhere and makes the combat more fair. Now, to prevent the player from exploiting this by looking away during fire fights to catch a break, we need a system that tracks the tension level. A system that understands, okay, the player is trying to cheese it here, so we shouldn't let up the pressure. Or conversely, the player is under too much pressure right now, we need to ease the pace, have the enemies make a mistake and give them a breather. This is why games use an AI director. It's a system that in a way tracks the player's stress metrics. For example, it can take into account how often the player is taking damage, if they are spending too much time in cover, how much ammo and health they have, and how long the current fight is lasting. This list is just off the top of my head. For every game, this would be a unique set of parameters that developers would select during discussion or simply through playtesting. This approach was used in Alien Isolation, where the system could notice that the player was uh, lingering in one spot. This was read as a drop in tension, so the AI director would send the alien to an area closer to the player to create a pressure and motivate them to change position. The the AI director can also be used to implement adaptive difficulty like in Resident Evil 4. It can track how the player is handling challenges through the game. If the system notices that the player is frequently missing shots, dying a lot and struggling with every enemy encounter, it can make opponents more passive, slow down their reaction time, give the player more resources and so on. By now, uh, you've probably realized that we are talking about a bit fantasy here. Making all of this work uh, at high level would be very hard and uh, it would take years to deliver it to the player in a polished way. But still, I want to talk about an idea that was uh, a key feature in uh, one of my all-time favorite games, uh, Stalker. This is its uh, a life system, which created a unique stories inside the game world. You could uh, come to a location and find a sign of recent battle uh, between Stalkers and Mutants. Or you might hear a firefight uh, far away, and uh, when you got there, uh, you'd only find the winner staking the loot. I won't describe the system in full, it's uh, pretty complex and uh, could be its own video, but the main idea is this. Events in the game happens on two levels, micro and macro. The micro level is what happens uh, right near the player, while the macro level is what happens uh, in the rest of the world. Here's how we can use it. Uh, the micro level is similar to what I've already described in the video. NPCs appear, get tasks and act on them. But at the macro level, events are simulated in a very simple way and the game only shows the detail when the player gets closer. For example, the system might flip a coin and decide that two squads of NPCs will run into each other. Based on the number and strength of each group, a result is calculated including a list of who survived. This information is then saved in the game world. For example, factions data is updated and open slots for new members appear. And uh, what's interesting here is that we can use this uh, micro-macro approach 
for optimization. We don't need our smart AI system running at full power when the player can't even see it. It's better to have a level of detail for AI system. With it, everything that happens off camera or far from the player is simulated simply, so the player only sees the result of the simulation when they turn toward them. So, what's the takeaway here? Of course, making a video describing different techniques uh, is much easier than putting them into a practice. But what surprised me is that many technologies that makes the game so much better, like GOP or A Life, are well documented and were made by teams much smaller than AAA studios of today. And I don't uh, really understand why we so rarely see great uh, AI in games. Personally, I think that smart enemies are cool. Thanks for watching until the end. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, it's important. And uh, see you in the next video.